So I am pleased to introduce um, Christine Santini. Christine is a licensed counselor and owner of Counseling for Special Needs Adults. Um, she's here today to present on a topic of sheltering in place and how to cope with social isolation and maintain hope for the future. So thank you for being here with us, Christine. Um, I'm going to turn everything over to her at this point. Oh, oh there we go. All right. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. Um, as I go through the presentation, just a, a note that at the end of the presentation, there will be a resource page. So if I refer to uh, any websites or any articles, uh, everybody will have access to that. Uh, so you don't have to write anything down or, or take notes. Okay, so let me share my screen and we'll get started. All right, excellent. Okay, so um, we're going to be talking today about uh, coping with the social isolation that we've all been feeling since uh, we've had to stay at home. Uh, but we're also going to really talk about maintaining hope, and that's a crucial part in getting through the next couple of phases uh, as as we as we open up the state little by little. Um, so since we've all been sheltering in place since the middle of March, uh, when the governor asked us all to do that, um, we've all been asking some common questions. Uh, whether we're staff or clients or anybody, we've just been asking the same questions, such as, why can't I hang out with my friends? Uh, why do I have to wear a mask when I go to the store? Uh, I'm hearing on the news that phase three is starting today. What does that actually mean? Um, and some people are, are saying, you know, I feel bored, I feel lonely. How can I deal with these feelings? The confusing part is that everyone has sort of different opinions and different answers to these questions. So today what I'm hoping to do is to really present the facts of why we have to be doing what we're doing, uh, but also uh, talk about the reality of how this is affecting us emotionally and, and what we can do to prepare for the next phase, which means uh, a little bit more social activity uh, in our lives. So we're going to just really go through what is COVID-19. Uh, we talk about that a lot, but when you break it down, uh, just want people to realize that the CO stands for Corona, the VI stands for virus, the D stands for disease, and the 19 stands for 2019, when the first cases were discovered. So we use the shortened version, uh, COVID-19, or we've been just using the word coronavirus. The main reason we've been told to stay home is because this virus uh, spreads so easily. And um, we're gonna just watch a, a quick clip from the Centers for Disease Control uh, that really kind of explains how it spreads and why we have to take some precautions uh, of staying home and staying far away from people. So let's get that going. We believe this new virus spreads mostly from person to person through respiratory droplets produced when someone who is sick coughs or sneezes. This is similar to how flu and other respiratory illnesses spread. These droplets can land in the mouth or nose of people nearby, or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. Most person-to-person -person spread happens when people are in close contact. It's also possible that this virus can spread when someone touches a contaminated surface and then touches the mouth, nose, or eyes. Okay, so it's a respiratory virus. Uh, so like they said in the video clip, um, 
when we're close to people, uh, the virus can spread uh, in the droplets that come out of our mouth and nose if we sneeze, if we cough, and just by talking to somebody. And so early in, or middle of March, we were told to shelter in place um, so that the virus could not spread from person to person. And so I just wanted to go through really quickly what that means or what that has meant for all of us. Um, essentially, it means staying at home uh, which we've all been doing, unless uh, we have to go somewhere, like to the store or uh, to a medical appointment or to work or even to go out and take a walk. Um, past two and a half months, uh, only essential businesses uh, can remain open. So that meant grocery stores, drug stores, hardware stores, uh, but restaurants were closed except for curbside curbside pickup and delivery. Uh, and as you probably know and have been experiencing, people were required, if they could, to work from home. And, and uh, so we've all kind of changed our routines pretty quickly. And sheltering in place was the one big change to prevent uh, us from spreading that virus from person to person. In addition, we've been learning about other things that we can do to stop the spread. And these are things that we need to continue doing as well. Uh, these are simple things, but what I really want to emphasize is the fact that we have control over the spread of this virus by doing these simple things. So for example, uh, avoiding close contact with people who are sick, Covering your nose or mouth, uh, if you sneeze or cough with a tissue or with your elbow, washing your hands right after, disinfecting um, your the things that you touch at home, uh, such as doorknobs and your computer and telephones and, and those kinds of things. Avoiding touching our eyes, uh, nose and mouth, and so a lot of times we don't even realize that we're, you know, uh, touching our nose or scratching something. Um, so we've been really more planful about keeping our hands away from our, our, our face. We've been told to stay home if we were sick and we've been told to wash our hands for at least 20 seconds uh, frequently throughout the day. So by doing these simple things, you are, you are, are helping to stop the spread of the virus. So we all have a part to play and we're all in control in, in how, how quickly this virus might spread or how slowly it might, it, it might stop spreading. So it is in our control. In addition to those, uh, those, tasks that we, we should be doing. Um, we also are required to do two more things, which I know we've been hearing a lot about on the news. Um, we've been required to social distancing, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, in just a minute. And there's been a lot of discussion about the, the necessity of wearing a face mask. So let's, let's talk first about what social distancing is and why it's so important. Uh, especially as we start to see stores opening, more stores, uh, more restaurants are going to have some outdoor seating. Social distancing is again one of the main things we can be doing to prevent the spread of the virus. So let's listen and learn a little bit more about that, what that means. We know that we're asking Americans to do a lot right now. So we're asking everyone to be selfless for others so that we can protect those who are most susceptible to this virus. A question I often get asked is why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? But well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk, but they've got to get it from somebody. Social distancing is really physical separation of people it's what we refer to when we ask people to say at least six feet apart. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants, not going to theaters where there are a lot of people. 
it all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others who might actually be infected or infect you. We all have a role to play in preventing person-to-person -person spread of this disease, which can be deadly for vulnerable groups. For more information on how you can social distance, please go to coronavirus.gov. All right. So if you, if we all sit down and think about it, in 10 weeks, we've had to completely change just about any, everything in our lives. And, and that's what we uh, we, our families and our, our friends have had to really come together and make some serious changes. And um, I want you guys to maybe give yourself a pat on the back because we did it. We are at a point where the virus is slowing down in Illinois um, and we all adapted. One of the biggest ad ad adaptations that, uh, we, that you guys have gone through is not being able to go to your programming and seeing your friends. Uh, so social distancing and staying at home means you had to give up that social contact with your friends and the staff and the people that know you so well. Um, and that was a tough sacrifice to make and you're still sacrificing that but uh, it's making a difference. It's making a big difference because the, slow, the virus is spreading slowly. Uh, but I do wanna get real and I do wanna talk about how difficult it has been. We, we, we're doing it, we're adapting well, but uh, it's also caused many of us to have a whole lot of different feelings and, and doing different behaviors that we're not quite used to doing. Um, so normal feelings and behaviors that you may be experiencing, I highlighted the word normal on purpose. It's because since we had to go through so many changes in a short amount of time, it is to be expected that we are going to feel things like fear and anxiety and, and anger and frustration. It's, it's normal for us to have some behavior changes because we can't go to our programming. We can't just go to a uh, family's home for a holiday. Um, so it's really important to realize that you're not alone, that we're all feeling a combination of these feelings, and we're all struggling with different behaviors and different habits that we've been getting into as we're staying at home. A couple of the, the, the ones that I do want to highlight um, are feelings of uncertainty, of loneliness, because we're not seeing our friends, we're not able to uh, stay on our schedule that we used to have, and feelings of loss. Um, we've had to make some significant changes, and when we make a change, we feel a loss not just a loss in our schedule and a loss in our uh, you know, routine, but a loss in the way we talk to our friends um, or the, a loss in the, the amount of time we can spend with family. So these are some intense feelings uh, that, that we've all been challenged with. In addition, we have all been challenged with different kinds of behaviors as we spend more and more time at home. Some of us have changes in appetite. Some people might be eating more, some people might be eating less. Um, there might be uh, difficulty getting a normal night's sleep because sometimes when we have nothing to do, we're napping or laying around. And then when it's time to go to bed, we're not tired. And so our whole sleep cycle uh, can be really disrupted. We might feel a lack of motivation just to get out of bed or to take a shower because we might not have anything to do. So we might get into a habit of not doing that, uh, which can really cause us to feel even, even more depressed or even more uh, challenged as we go throughout our day. Because we're all staying at home, we might be experiencing more conflict with family. Uh, 
on the flip side, we might be feeling some closeness as well. Um, and, and people have been talking about that as a positive. Um, but, you know, by this time, it's been 10 weeks, we're all kind of getting frustrated with each other. Um, you know, having some frequent arguments and feeling irritable is normal. You're not alone and we're all struggling with that. Um, also, when, uh, when it is time to connect with a friend, some people are describing sort of a little anxiousness or a fear of actually socializing again, person to person. So um, as things do start to open up slowly, some people are like, well, I, I'm so used to not socializing that I don't know how to do that again, and I'm kind of out of practice. So having a little bit of fear or anxiety about that is, is very normal, okay? Um, so we're gonna take a look at the, some of the best ways for us to cope with these feelings and behaviors. And a lot of these you might have heard, but hopefully I can give you some more ideas. Um, on things that you can do while you're still at home. Taking, uh, taking breaks from the news is, is super important. Um, sometimes if we just watch the same information over and over again, it can kind of bring us into a feeling of hopelessness. Taking care of our body is number one priority as well. Uh, eating right, we're gonna take a look a little bit more about what that means. Um, making time to unwind, connecting with others, setting goals and priorities, and then uh, making sure we focus on the facts of the situation and not just what people are spreading as rumors or opinions. So let's take a look at some ways that we can take care of our body. Uh, the, the most important thing, especially as we start to venture out a little bit, is to wear a mask when you leave home. Again, because the virus can be transmitted through droplets when we talk or cough, wearing a mask keeps those droplets uh, to ourselves. We don't spread them to other people. Um, and it also protects us from inhaling droplets from other people. So, so that's really helpful for ourselves and for those around us. Physical activity, uh, staying active. The one thing I wanna emphasize when we talk about this is you can go outside. Just because we're, we have been told to stay at home doesn't mean you can't go outside and go for a walk or take your dog for a walk or go for a bike ride. It's super important as the weather gets nice to remember uh, you can go outside, you can run around. Uh, as long as you're staying six feet away from somebody and wearing your mask if, if you're close to somebody, um, you can get physically active as the weather turns nice. That will also help you with a better night's sleep. If you're physically active and we're outside our bedroom, then when it is time to go to bed, we're probably going to feel uh, t more tired and we'll probably feel like we do want to rest our body if we've been active throughout the day. And then finally, uh, eating healthy food, as you already know, drinking plenty of water. If we eat foods that are high in sugar and fat and salt, it just makes us wanna take a nap and just stay in bed. It doesn't help us to get out and to be active. So trying to minimize how much of that food we eat is gonna be really important to help motivate us to, to get outside and, and get some exercise. In addition to those ideas, um, it's also really important for us to, uh, to practice some ways to relax without just sleeping. And, and if we're bored, uh, it's easy just to watch TV or, or close our eyes, but I want to challenge everybody to really practice some meditation, uh, especially before you go to bed, because uh, this might take your mind off of some of the things that you're worrying about. 
I put this website on the screen because they have some free uh, free meditation aids such as sleep meditations, calming music, and they're all free, easy to use. I'm sure there are other apps out there um, that are just as good, but I found this one to be easy, very easy to use and really effective. Um, you know, in, in helping when that anxiety, you know, increases or, or uh, you know, or when that loneliness sets in, it can really be super helpful. Face-to-face -face communication. So staying connected to others uh, is a huge piece that we, that, that again, I want to challenge all of us to think about. The first and foremost thing is everybody's bored. We're all in the same predicament, okay? So you're not the only one, which means we all have a responsibility to reach out to other people. We can't just wait for somebody to reach out to us. We have to have courage and uh, we have to do the best we can to take a chance and to maybe Skype somebody or FaceTime or you know, text them to reach out and make that first move. It will make the other person happy, no doubt about it, because we know that they're bored as well. Face-to-face, -face, um, I'm highlighting that in particular because when we talk to people and we see their face, it's actually a different kind of communication we're having than if we're just reading a text. So even though face-to-face -face might be over the computer, just being able to see somebody's facial expressions, uh, just being able to see their eyes and, and makes us have to listen a little bit more closely to what they're saying. We can't be you know, doing something on the side while we're chatting with them because they see what we're doing and we see what they're doing. So we become more invested in the conversation, uh, which draws us closer to the person that we're talking to. So using the technology to our advantage, and I know your programming um, is, is virtual, but you guys are already in a good habit of seeing your friends face-to-face uh, -face through the computer programming, and, and I'm sure have, have experienced how awesome that is just to see their face. So if you could uh, you know, make efforts to do that, uh, that's I think gonna help a lot as well. In addition, um, thinking about other people and taking the focus off of ourselves can also uh, be a great way to get rid of some of the loneliness or some of the depression we might be feeling. Uh, one of my favorite, easiest things to do that always puts a smile on somebody's face is just to send them a free e-card. Um, I put a couple of websites up here that offer free e-cards, and they have them for holidays and birthdays and thank yous. Um, there's nothing that says you can't send a free e-card to somebody every day and just say, hey, I'm thinking of you, I miss you. Um, whatever is in your heart to say to them, that is gonna make that person feel so good. And when you know that, it makes you feel good as well. So helping other people uh, in whatever way they need to is gonna benefit you uh, significantly at the same time. You can also uh, make a mask for somebody. There's uh, a lot of links online on how to make a, a free with a t-shirt. Um, and just offering to listen to somebody who's having, who's having a bad day. Um, you know, we all, need, we all need somebody to talk to and being able to FaceTime or Skype and actually listen to what other people are going through is a huge, uh, huge help to that person. And again, we get benefits from that as well. 
All right, staying focused and productive. This has been the most challenging part for many of us. Um, what do I do with all my time? I'm sick of watching TV. So how do I stay productive and how do I focus on something else other than how do I pass the time? A um, Couple of ideas, create a project to do at your home. I know uh, some friends of mine decided to paint their bedroom, you know, with old paint that they had in the garage. They, they just said, you know, I'm just gonna paint a wall. Or uh, some people have been getting crafty and I did put down this great website, uh, ehow.com. And if you see, there are all sorts of crafts you can learn how to do with, with supplies that you have at home. Uh, you can do jewelry making, party decorations, etc. So uh, it might take some creative thinking, but, um, but I think if you came up with some project with the stuff you have at home, that would give you some purpose and it would make you feel productive. The second uh, resource that we have at our fingertips that we don't realize is that we can still use our library. Even though they're closed, libraries have been doing a ton of creative stuff virtually, okay? So I just went on websites uh, from libraries that are in your area, and I just wanted to quickly kind of go through, just highlight some of the cool things that your libraries are offering that you have free access to just by having a library card. Uh, Bloomington Public Library, they have e-reading, e-movies, e-learning. Um, the Cold Stream Public Library, they have software classes. You can learn computer graphics. You can learn how to use Microsoft Office. Glen Ellen Public Library has a frozen custard social coming up on June 8th. Who wouldn't want to do that? <laughs> um, Roselle Public Library uh, has a class June 3rd, virtual beginning Tai Chi. Uh, again, these are free because, of, because you have a library card uh, and you are allowed to sign up for any of these. Uh, Warrenville Public Library has uh, Hoopla, which is movies, ebooks, audiobooks, e-magazines, um, just all sorts of other fun things to read. And then uh, Winfield Public Library, they are doing a word art project. So uh, that's gonna be June 12th. And again, that's free. Uh, West Chicago has just something called Flipster where you can flip through magazines. Maybe, you know, there's a magazine that you wanted to to just flip through, couldn't go to the store to get it, but you have free access. Um, Wheaton Public Library, these are some things that they had in May. Uh, when I did this, they didn't have their June schedule up, but um, they had a, a pet chat, they had a, a job club workshop to help with job skills and resume writing. Um, organizing your home and office. Who doesn't need to be doing that, right? So I, I really, really want you guys um, to go on the websites of your library and find one or two things. You're going to be surprised at what they're doing that you can tap into uh, during your downtime. In addition, you can, one project can be your own mask and make a statement with it. Um, you can put a logo on it, you can get a sharpie and come up with your own saying, your own whatever you want to put on it. Uh, you're going to see more and more people getting creative with their masks and so why not get a jump start on it and create, you know, two or three masks that really share, you know, who you are as a person and, and you know, what, what you enjoy doing. So it could be a logo, it could be a lot of different things on your mask. The, 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 the one piece that we all are looking for right now is hope. We are looking for hope that this is going to end soon. And the great part about doing this presentation today is that today 
uh, is the first day that Illinois moves into phase three. So I really encourage everybody to get the facts of where we are in this pandemic. Don't listen to rumors or opinions of others. You might hear somebody saying, oh, this is gonna last until December. They don't know the facts, and so they don't know if that's actually true. There's a plan put in place by Governor Pritzker. It's called Restore Illinois, um, and the link to that website is, is on, on the last page of this presentation, so you'll be able to access it. Uh, if you don't already know, Illinois outlines five phases that we have to go through to fully open up and to have things quote unquote, go back to normal, okay? But again, we are officially in phase three. This is a quote that I just heard, that I just found this morning on Newsweek. Uh, and this is something we all need to be proud of. Illinois has met all of the White House's criteria required to reopen for business. The only state in the United States to achieve that goal. Illinois will enter phase three of its reopening plan on Friday, and that is today. So we have a lot of reason to be hopeful because all of our hard work that you've been doing and your family and all the sacrifices we've all been making is making a huge difference. So what is phase three? Phase three is called the recovery phase, okay? It means that uh, fewer people are catching the virus. It means that fewer people are going to the hospital. If they do go to the hospital, they don't need intensive care. Um, and, and it means that gatherings limited to 10 people or fewer are, are allowed. So we're allowed to have small gatherings. Unfortunately, this doesn't mean that we, that you guys can go back to your programming um, as usual because there are more than 10 people uh, in your recreational program. So that will come in phase four. But in phase three, you can get together with people, um, you know, a couple people or, or nine other people and be still within the requirements uh, and the guidelines. We do have to uh, get together with people with caution though. We do have to uh, wear our face coverings and still use that social distancing of staying six feet apart from each other. So we can be excited. This is, this is a, a good phase that we're in. It's based on facts. Um, we can get excited and hopeful. You can get a haircut now. Uh, you have to make an appointment and you have to wear a face mask and you might have to wait in your car until your appointment is ready, but you can go get a haircut. You can get your nails done. You can go to a barber shop. Um, you can go to all different stores, um, Hobby Lobby, Joanne's Fabrics, all these stores that have been closed are now going to be opening. Again, there's going to be some modifications. Um, again, face masks are going to be required. Some shops uh, will only allow certain certain number of people in the shop at once, so there might be a line that you might have to wait in uh, outside while you're waiting your turn to get in. So it's still going to take some patience and understanding, but the cool thing is we get to go shopping in, in another store other than a grocery store or a drug store. And like I mentioned, you can call a friend uh, for a hangout or nine friends for a hangout. And I think that's the hardest part for people to uh, to kind of understand and put into practice because we're not used to calling people and and planning something outside of our recreational programs. Usually that's why we go to our recreational programs is to see our friends. But um, so this phase is going to require us to do some different things and to have some more courage to connect with our friends outside of programming. 
So um, in talking to uh, your staff, there is a buzz book that uh, your program is putting together or has. There probably will be an opportunity for you to add your name and information to that book. And that is going to be a cool resource so that if you do have a friend that you miss and you want to maybe call them and say, hey, do you want to just go to the park and take a walk, you'll have their information. Because I know that's the biggest barrier to doing this is not having somebody's phone number, not knowing if you are able to share your phone number or your address. And, but through this buzz book through something that's being monitored, I think it would be a great resource for everybody to participate in to add your information because people are going to probably call you as well. Um, so once that resource is available, you can find somebody in that book that you miss talking to. You can call them on the phone. You can just say, hi, do you want to get together for a walk? I know this is nerve wracking and we're out of practice doing it, but if you have a specific idea of something you might want to do with that friend, that would make it a lot easier for that person to say, oh, that sounds like a good idea. So, um, so I just gave an example here on the slide of, of how the words you can use. Um, you know, hi Mary, this is Christine, how are you doing? I miss seeing you at WDSRA and was wondering if you wanted to get together with me sometime this week. Um, I thought we could meet at the park or go for a walk together. Keep in mind, the walk would be outside. It would still be important to wear a face mask. And while you walk, you'd still want to put distance between you and your friend. But you can go for a walk for an hour and you can talk and you can connect with somebody that you really miss. And I just kind of threw in some pictures. This is Brad Schneider, one of our congressmen. Uh, and this is an example of him uh, over Memorial Day weekend having fun, uh, but staying safe. So he's attending a birthday party. He's wearing his mask. He's staying six feet away from uh, the person who's celebrating. There are people in the background uh, playing and walking their dog, and, and we get to do this. So it's sort of a mind shift that I want you to start thinking about. We get to go outside, we get to socialize with people, but it is going to take effort on your part to get that going, okay? Um, this was a Memorial Day service that he also, uh, people are not six feet apart because it was, um, it was, uh, a Memorial Day ritual uh, where they were uh, thinking about the people that have passed away in the war, but they're all wearing their masks. And that's the important thing. If we can't be six feet away from somebody, we have to be wearing the mask at all times. And there are only eight people who attended this. So it's within the limits of having a group 10 or under. Um, and again, this is why um, you cannot go back to your programming quite yet, because your classes and activities have more than 10, and the state is not ready for, for, um, for that phase at this point. Question I get all the time is, what can we do? You know, we're adults. We don't want to just go out and play. Um, and so we have to think of adult things that we like to do outside. And again, we haven't thought about these things in a long time because we've been busy with other scheduled activities, but um, it could be something as simple as playing catch with somebody, kicking a soccer ball around. Yeah, we're adults, but that's fun. Um, we can swing on the swings as we talk to our friends. We can ride bikes. Uh, we can just sit in the grass, maybe go to a park, bring a beach, you know, towel, sit in the grass six feet apart um, and just talk and just visit with somebody. You can have a picnic, um, you can play tennis, you can walk a dog, you can even just invite somebody over to sit in your driveway or your backyard. Uh, and I just put, you know, you could have a phase, uh, whoops, a phase three party, which is because we're officially in phase three. You can, that's a good reason to call somebody and say, hey, come on over. We have a lot to celebrate. 
do you want to sit in my backyard and and you know we can have some iced tea or something um so as we as we close whoops uh, I do want to leave us, leave you with this thought. Your hard work, the hard work that you and your family and WDSRA and everybody in your circle, your hard work is making things change for the better, okay? You're doing it and we just have to keep it going with following the guidelines, uh, but enjoying ourselves and enjoying uh, the positive changes that are, are coming our way and that are starting today, as a matter of fact. Okay, so here is a, a point where you guys, I think, are gonna be able to chat and uh, share some questions. So I'm going to stop that. And I'm gonna turn it over to uh, you guys. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, Christine, for that. Um, so this time we, we do have time for questions. So just in order to keep it um, easy and so we can all hear, if you do have a question, if you can kind of give a wave or raise your hand and we'll monitor that and unmute you so you can ask your question to Christine. No questions? No questions. <laughs> Can you guys give um, a thumbs up? Did you enjoy it? Was it helpful? Yeah, helped you? Okay, good to hear. Um, so we, we do have this presentation on a recording so we can send that out. If you, you know, miss something, you want to hear it again, um, you wanna share it with a friend or someone else that could benefit from hearing from it, we will be sending that out on social media so that others can have access to it and use those resources. If you would like the websites that Christine provided, um, again, we can also share those in um, an attachment or something like that to make it easier to access. Other than that, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you for Christine for your presentation. Thank um, you for having me. It was a lot of fun, thank you. And everyone enjoy your weekend and, and phase three in a safe way.